Coming number 10, OG Okoye. Okoye is a famous celebrity in Nigeria, and this story has to be one of the funniest incidents of people getting exposed for living fake lives. Back in 2017, she famously posted a photo of two dogs on her Instagram and claimed them as her own as she captioned the photo with, Yippee, my new babies just arrived. Unfortunately for Okoye, those were not actually her new fur babies. The puppies and the photo of them belong to an American celebrity named Kenya Moore. A fan that actually keeps up with Moore saw Okoye's post and immediately called her out for it. In their caption of the side by side photos, they said, some lady in Africa took a screenshot of King and Twirl from Kenya's page and she's claiming them as hers. Peep Kenya's Range Rover logo on the floor mat. This lady is an actual verified user too. Report. Report indeed. In at number 9, Courtney Nielsen. Now this one is really bizarre because no one has even pointed out that Courtney had used a heavily edited photo of herself and she apparently was a political newcomer trying to be the mayor of Boise. As you can see on this profile of her that was done for the Idaho press, this is the photo they used for her. However, I only discovered what she actually looked like by doing a reverse Google search. Here's what Courtney actually looks like. I honestly don't know how many editing apps and filters she used on that photo, but damn is she completely unrecognizable. Can you imagine voting for this woman and then you find out that she was faking her appearance the entire time? It's one thing for people to have blemishes edited out in a photo that's going to be published in the newspaper, but it's another thing to heavily Photoshop yourself while you're running for mayor of the city. In at a break, Casey. Similar to Okoye's story of getting caught stealing other people's content to fake flex, here we have Nigeria singer Casey who took to Instagram and posted a pile of cash with the caption, No time, God I give you praise just for one day. Unfortunately for him, the person who actually posted this image actually saw Casey's and so he decided to expose the influencer for living a fake life. In response he said, Bro stop screenshotting my money pics, thirsty, and lame just go get a bag. Which couldn't be more embarrassing. In at number 7, Julia Stakiva. Back in 2016, Julia had appeared on a morning show and claimed to be the daughter of a billionaire. Famously, she was the woman that claimed she was too beautiful to work. She also claimed that she would fly from her home in London to Russia just to get her hair done. However, shortly after bragging about her luxurious lifestyle, she was exposed for renting out a nice place specifically for the filming of her appearance on the show called Rich Kids. However, when the camera crew arrived, she actually tried to pretend the, the entire place was hers. But, you know, there's the whole landlord. Lord thing too that just exposed her for living that fake life. In number 6, May D. Back in 2013, it was reported that singer May D had just bought a home worth an estimated $150 million. The story and pics of the home got picked up from several blogs and internet forums, but May D never really corrected them. He just sort of went along with the lie. Eventually though, while he was doing an interview for a magazine, they really started to press him on that home, simply by asking him questions about the choices and design and if he had any say in that. May again just went along with it and tried to vague vaguely answer the questions as best that he could. I mean, he was really good at answering questions without actually answering the questions. In response to the interviewer asking him if this had always been his dream home, he said, We have to start from somewhere, and I believe we have started. Fast forward to 2020, and he was finally coming clean. In response to his former boss calling him out for lying, he said, For your information, I was staying in their boys' squatters with their driver and their cook, just one room, all of us shared a toilet, and I had big songs, and also the other side of their twin duplex was empty. Now, I slept on brand new television carton and use my shirt as cover cloth. Yeah, so not exactly someone that's buying a $150 million home. The craziest part too was that his fans defended him and even rumored that the home was worth more, but it all turned out to be fake. In number 5, Whitney Cummings. For a while now, Celebrity Roast had become a big Comedy Central event where comedians talk smack to each other and take celebrities down a peg. Although with so many of these roasts and alternating comedians, not too many people have noticed the same jokes being recycled. Specifically during the 2009 roast of Joan Rivers, comedian Whitney Cummings took a shot at the other comics by saying, The only thing lower than Greg Giraldo's ticket sales is Mario Cantone's T-cell count. Which, great joke, however, just five months before this, Lisa Lampanelli used the exact same punchline during the Larry the Cable Guy roast. And the target's names were different, but structurally it's the exact same joke. On the same network. So is that Comedy Central that got exposed? I think that's Comedy Central that got exposed. Sorry, Whitney. In number four, Coco Zaria. You'd think at this point influencers would have stopped screenshotting other people's posts and saying that it was theirs, but unfortunately it's still one of the most prevalent forms of living fake lives on the internet. Another Nigerian celebrity named Coco Zaria posted a photo of a Mercedes Benz and wrote, My new toy. Now of course his comment section quickly filled up with people congratulating him on his new purchase. Although the praise didn't last very long because as soon as it was reported that the car belonged to a different influencer who had flaunted his custom Coco plates numerous times in the past, this guy was just exposed for everyone to see. Pretty embarrassing too. 
In number three, Time Magazine. This must have been a huge page that got caught in this social media lie because the original post had over 200,000 likes. The black and white photo of a woman with an old school style haircut was captioned with Time Magazine's definition of a perfect body in 1955. Although the person who exposed this agreed with the messaging behind it, they didn't appreciate the blatant lying. After posting the full size, unedited, colored version of the photo, they said, except Aria Giovanni was born in 77, but yes, beautiful curves. That comment alone got nearly 4,000 thousand likes. In at number two, Khloe Kardashian. Actor, reality TV show star, they're basically the same thing. Most of these reality television shows are scripted, so you're just watching bad acting, essentially. I'm just justifying how she fits into this list, though. Regardless, she lied, and that's why she's here. Khloe posted this photo to Instagram with the caption, I am so proud of myself. Can I say that? I filmed on a tripod in my kitchen, a lot of me baking and prepping for today, so I will have that up on my app soon. I love testing myself and seeing what I can accomplish and actually make successfully. Now let's pray it tastes as great as they look. This monkey bread is going to be so expletive bomb. Then there's just a bunch of bomb emojis. Now the first comment though down below immediately points out the obvious that catering is indeed a great thing. Not too long after her post, TMZ discovered that the pies were actually from one of the premier bakeries in LA called Sweet Lady Jane. In fact, Chloe even displayed her pies in the exact same order that's featured on the company's website. Talk about getting exposed. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Halima Abubakar. Now this one is just egregious behavior. I really can't get over how awful this next one is. Not that long ago, this Nigerian actress made a big announcement. She shared a photo of a mother holding a baby's arm and captioned the photo with, a gift from God and I will cherish you for life. Biggest miracle, a boy. Now the problem here is, that's not her baby. That is not her baby. And the real mother of the baby who took this photo decided to expose Halima for her lies. Here's the original post, and when people started notifying her that Halima had stolen the photo, here's what this mother said. I don't know them or you, I just want my child's photo off your page. Liking my photo is one thing, but taking it and saying you gave birth is not right. Weirdly enough, Halima then tried to claim that she had her baby last week, but googled baby pics just to say that her baby had arrived, you know, instead of taking her own. We'll leave it at that. Starting us off at number 10, we got the Jenners. Kendall and Kylie Jenner have built an empire for themselves and each other, although it seems Kylie has really taken the lead in regards to the value of her brand. Regardless, guys, as we know, the whole family is a brand in themselves, but Kendall and Kylie, who have their own brand, which is literally called Kendall and Kylie, exposed each other when Kendall had a 25th birthday party. It was during a time where cases were at an all-time high and a lockdown was in effect in California, yet still Kendall threw a Halloween party with all of her famous celebrity guests and not a mask in sight. At least from the photos and videos, which technically shouldn't have been shared, but were thanks to Kylie. There was actually a notice encouraging people to take pictures and videos, but not share them to Instagram or any social media. Yet Kylie appeared to do just that. And as you can imagine, the backlash that followed was quite rough, but it was fun. At number nine, Jake Paul. I mean, we know time and time again that Jake Paul has done things to really piss people off. Whether it's Conor McGregor, Dana White, or any other UFC fighter, Tyson and Tommy Fury, or even other YouTubers, Jake is the king of getting under one's skin. Love him or hate him, he's good at insults and encouraging people to go after him. Although some may disagree that that's the right way to go about business, you'll soon learn there is no right way in business as it truly is a doggy dog world. That being said, it seems Jake crossed the line and exposed himself, leading some backlash while he lives in Puerto Rico with his brother, who is training for his fight with Floyd Mayweather. Posting to his story before deleting it after being called out, Jake Logan and the crew were seen driving a motorized vehicle on a beach. The issue is that this beach is apparently a hot spot for turtles to lay eggs, and you guessed it, they were driving on the beach during egg laying season. I don't think that's actually a term. Either way, Jake and company claimed total innocence, with Logan at one point saying it was a private beach, but it seems as of now the incident is being investigated by local authorities. Yikes. On to number eight, Shan Hefley. This fitness influencer exposed himself a few years back simply to prove a point to his followers. Hefley is jacked, as you can clearly see. However, like most influencers, he too would edit some of his photos. Whether he wanted to make it appear he's more ripped than he actually is, which, I mean, bro, come on, you're shredded. Or he just wanted the colors in the photo to pop, Shan would casually edit his photos. Yet one day, Shan decided that he would show his followers the real deal. So he uploaded a photo of himself, side by side, unedited, on his Instagram. On one side was the original photo that had no edits at all, with the text, no edit. And on the other side was a clearly edited photo of Shan where he looks much more defined and there is text reading edited. Unfortunately, he has since deleted the post. However, it was captioned with a lengthy note that the majority of who and what you see on social media, especially Instagram, is heavily edited and that you shouldn't be comparing yourself to nearly impossible images to maintain, which is unfortunately what it seems a lot of people do with social media. It seems Shan wanted to spin the narrative, although I don't know why he deleted his post. Either way, a lot of respect for the guy. On to number seven, we got Azusaga Kuyu 
Yuki. This is an absolute bonker story as a young Japanese woman who had an obsession with motorcycles turned out to be a 50 year old Japanese man who had an obsession with motorcycles and also very nice hair. He was just using a Facetune like app. Wild times my friends, wild times indeed. So the influencer here, or I guess the man behind this, who is just known as Zongu, was able to grow himself a following of over 20,000 on Twitter simply by posting photos of himself posing as a young woman who's into bikes. Speaking with BBC, he explained his decision which it's really weird, but I kind of understand why he did it. I quote him saying, no one will read what a normal middle-aged man taking care of his motorcycle and taking pictures outside posts on his account. However, over time, it seems Zongu kind of got obsessed with his influencer persona, which led to Azusaga Kuyuki to go from posting all motorcycle stuff to just regular selfies and even glamour shots. Kind of like a catfish, if you will. He would expose himself after there was some suspicion with people calling out the arm hair in some of his photos, or I guess her photos, or a potential reflection of a man in photos with a mirror. Although arm hair on women is normal, so I don't really understand like where they get that idea from. Side note, if you didn't know, women have arm hair, so that's just a thing. Either way, well, on the Monday Late Show, which is similar to any nightly show, Zongu exposed himself, yet still it seems his following has only increased, so... Good for him. In at number six, we got TBH Byron. Byron Denton is the man's name, and he's an influencer that actually did a social media experiment. As we know, influencers appear to make money just making their followers envious of the life they have. I don't mean that in an insulting way, but Byron somewhat proved that. He faked being on a private jet, shopping at the Louis Vuitton store, and all that fun stuff, simply by using Photoshop and a green screen. And people were buying into it, to the point that his friends and family who saw these posts on social media were wondering where he was getting all that money from in the first place. Byron simply faked this life of a rich influencer, and it apparently worked, as he explained in a YouTube video that his engagement increased significantly. We're talking likes, comments, follows, they all saw a big upswing. So clearly Instagram, or at least Byron's followers, are into living vicariously through others. Now at number five, Jenny Ambula. I've included Jenny on a few lists over the years, and well, it seems there couldn't be a list more fitting for her than this one. Unfortunately, her page is no longer available on Instagram, and that's likely because she was arrested and charged, along with her father, Omar, who was a border agent in Colombia. So long story short, it seems Omar would do shady things in exchange for money, which she would then send or launder to his daughter, Jenny, who is living in Miami, where she would attend the University of Miami. You guys see where this one's headed? I can't confirm exactly what Omar would turn a blind eye to. Maybe food, cars, jewelry, maybe other things. I genuinely don't know. I'm just joking. I actually, I have no idea what he didn't claim or, you know, say he saw. What I do know is Jenny would take the money, spend it on luxury items like fancy clothes and cars and jewelries. I mean, you guys know, and then posted Instagram as an influencer, like they all do. Unfortunately, this was all the evidence the Colombian authorities would need to prove what Omar and his family were doing, thus leading to an arrest. Yeah, talk about exposing yourself, eh? The issue is when I type, like, when I type expose themselves, you get one of two things. You get this side of it, and then you get the side of like, you know, adult entertainment. So it's a very dangerous word. Number four, Takashi69. Another influencer who has been on plenty of lists, Takashi is the epitome of what you see on social media isn't always what you get. As we know for a while, Takashi was making headlines, claiming to be involved with gangs and living that lifestyle. Then he did a total 180, went to court and snitched on a handful of gang members who are now facing jail time. It's been a very strange situation. I'm genuinely surprised nothing has happened to Takashi and hopefully nothing does, but as you can imagine, many people aren't happy with the guy. So I wouldn't be surprised if someone tries to go after him. Then again, you think they would have by now, so who knows? Regardless guys, he claims they turned on him and that's why he decided to snitch, but at the end of the day, it seems he was never really about that life and instead just tried to play it up to sell some records. When things got real, as we know the authorities got involved, people were sent to prison for a very long time and Takashi, after serving a short prison sentence, maybe it was like eight months or a, or a year, maybe I think? Well, he's now back to his old ways of calling out other rappers and just trolling the world while making headlines nonstop. Unclear what the future has in store for him, but it seems even after exposing himself for not really being a part of that life, he still got millions of fans and followers, or at least people that just want to see what he's up to. So he makes for good entertainment. Kind of like Jake Paul. At number three, Hush Puppy. Much like our friend Jenny, it seems Hush Puppy here also exposed himself on Instagram. Guys, have you not seen the movie Casino? They literally tell them not to go out and buy flashy things after getting a big score. Unless, uh, was it Goodfellas? No, I'm almost positive it was Casino. Almost positive it was Casino. Either way guys, the man's real name is Raman Abbas, and although he appeared to live quite a lavish lifestyle, well, it's not all that meets the eye. Similar to Jenny, it seems Hush here laundered money he would make illegally by purchasing expensive clothes and flashy cars. And like most influencers, Hush Puppy wanted to show off his wealth, so he did exactly that. And as per sources, one of his Instagram birthday posts is what led to the authorities right to him. And it's not so much what he posted that got him in trouble, but more so how he afforded what he posted. Authorities arrested Abbas and a handful of his associates in relation to numerous cyber crimes, which they believe is what led to him living such a lavish lifestyle. Upon his arrest, authorities would claim numerous phones, laptops, and tens of millions in assets and cash. Guess being an influencer isn't all that meets the eye, folks. Sometimes they're just people committing cyber crimes or laundering money legally. 
be someone they're not. <laughs> Number two, we got Ann Salamanca. One of the more recent to expose themselves, Anne is from Alabama, but has grown a massive following in the Philippines, where she is known as Mika Salamanca on TikTok. And while traveling from Manila to Hawaii, it seems Anne, or Mika, whoever she is, decided she wasn't going to follow the 14-day mandatory quarantine protocol required for all international travelers. And as they say in Scooby-Doo, she may have gotten away with it if it wasn't for all those meddling kids. Posting to her TikTok, Salamanca exposed herself dancing around at a local grocery store and going out to eat just four days after her arrival. Although she claimed innocent since upon being caught, explaining that law enforcement told her she could leave her residence with a negative COVID test, it appears the local authorities argued that claim. She was arrested, released on $2,000 bail, and then deported back home to the USA. Yikes. Which I guess Hawaii is like the US. I think she was just deported back to Alabama. I don't know. And then at number one, Mia Wild. This is the craziest of the crazy as Mia is actually a reporter who is simply just trying to understand or prove something as any good journalist does. I should take notes. Ah, good thing I'm an actor. Either way, Mia here isn't actually Mia and instead is Kaliste Wittenberg, a reporter for SBS who spent six months deep diving into the world of Instagram influencers. And she did expose herself. After her six month investigation, Mia, or I guess Kaliste, would explain all about the ups and downs she saw herself go through as an influencer. From buying followers to start out, to posting pictures in which at first she was incredibly self-conscious about, it seems over time she started to embrace the idea of the influencer. However, she admitted it's not all that meets the eye, explaining how tough it truly was even after getting signed by an agency to get her brand deals. I quote her, it is a full-time job and I wonder if it is worth the pay that they are getting for most of them. There's a small percentage that do seem to crack through and earn bigger bucks, but the overwhelming majority would be like me and making very little. All in the name of journalism. You gotta love it. Kicking things off at number 10, Brooke Houts. I feel like I'm saying her name wrong. I've included her on so many lists, but I'll be honest, I don't really care to say her name right because of what she did. Sorry, Brooke. Now, Brooke, it seems at one point was doing quite well for herself on YouTube. She's currently got a couple hundred thousand subscribers and most of her videos are so heavily disliked. It's legitimately like a 3% to 97% like to dislike ratio on average. And I can tell you right now, she's getting more than four likes or I guess one like, three dislikes. It's bad. And for those of you unaware, Brooke fell from grace very quickly after she accidentally uploaded the wrong version of her own YouTube video to her channel. She would remove it once noticing her mistake, but not before exposing herself to the world. While Brooke tried to film the video, her dog, a larger German Shepherd, can be seen trying to get her attention. Whether he wanted to play or just a nice belly rub, it seems Brooke didn't care all that much and tried to get him to stop. After he wouldn't listen, she got pretty aggressive at one point, appearing to spit and then hitting him. Naturally, the internet doesn't let stuff like that slide, so unsurprisingly, she would go viral and get some of the most intense backlash I've seen. This led to her more or less staying off socials for a while before planning a comeback, which, well, it hasn't been going as planned. On to number nine, Natalia Taylor. Who needs to spend money on traveling when you could just go to Ikea? That was Taylor's thought process and it appeared to work. In an effort to prove a point that social media could be incredibly manipulated and manufactured. Guys, haven't we learned this from like the tabloids over the years? Anyways, Taylor decided to expose some tips and tricks. So like any good influencer, she decided to get a few outfits, do her makeup, and head down to Ikea, where she would shoot a handful of images, making it appear as if she was on vacation in Bali. Taken to YouTube, Taylor would explain how she did it all and even mentioned how people were staring while she was initially doing the pictures in the pre-made house sets that Ikea has in their showrooms. Ah, the life of an influencer. Some of her followers questioned the content, given the beautiful scenery of where she was, why all the photos were taken inside. Some of the pictures even still had the tags showing. Others genuinely fell for it. You gotta love the internet. At number eight, Tupi Saravia. This travel influencer would go viral after it appeared a few clouds were following her all over the world. Well, she would joke about herself. A tweet pointing out the fact that this social media influencer has the same clouds in every photo appeared to gain a lot of traction, leading to the internet trying to expose Tupi for the fraud that she is. But it turns out there was no fraud at all. In fact, when news outlets started to reach out and question her about the clouds, she couldn't help but laugh about it, as she's been very open with her followers in regards to how she edits her photos and even has a permanent highlight on her Instagram page explaining how to do what she does and showing examples of her followers using the preset cloud filters that she made. Speaking with BuzzFeed at the time, she explained, I quote, I can't believe how far this went. I use an app called QuickShot to help with the composition of the photograph when the sky is burned or overexposed. Referring to her followers, she said, I quote, they were always aware about this because I never hide it. I always tell them the apps I use. Actually, I'm the first one to tell the joke that the clouds are following me around the world. Gotta love like a good exposed influencer story, you know? On the number seven, another beautiful day. These two travel influencers faced some serious backlash, at one point taking a break from social media before ultimately returning just a few days later after they tried to raise money for their next excursion. The couple who documents their travels took to GoFundMe in hopes of raising money for a mission to document the world, revealing both the good and the bad. 
and that's fine. If their followers or fans wanted to donate or support them for their travels, then all the power to them. The issue came when it was revealed through the GoFundMe that one of the influencer's mothers actually works two jobs to ensure that the pair could continue traveling while barely having much for herself. As you can imagine, people quickly felt for the mother and were very upset with the couple. Of the donations they received, most were left with comments asking for all the proceeds to go to the working mother, not the couple hoping to travel. I, they tried to double down explaining it's not about the money, but the bigger message they're trying to share with people. And as you can imagine, well, uh, people just weren't having it. At number six, Chow B. Leo. All right, this story is quite wild as this influencer was using a filter to make herself appear much more youthful than she actually is. Funny enough, in part one of this series, we had a motorcycle fanatic who used a woman's filter to help grow his following. As he explained, no one cares about a 40 year old man talking about motorcycles, but a young girl, and you're all set. Apparently the same goes for Chow as she was using filters to make herself appear much more youthful and as some, more attractive. And it worked, as some sources claim she was, I quote, worshipped for being the cute goddess. This led to people People sending her money or buying her gifts, as is the case for a lot of live streamers. It seems she was using her looks to her advantage, encouraging her followers and supporters to continue buying her gifts, promising a face reveal when she reached a certain goal. Unfortunately for Chow, there was a glitch in the system she was using, which led to her true identity being revealed to all of her followers. As you can imagine, she lost a lot of followers rather quickly, with many outraged that they were catfished by a streamer. What an interesting world we live in, guys, let me tell you. <laughs> At number five, Chad Moss, aka Bow Wow. This one was quick and simple, taking his Instagram obviously to show off his wealth, Moss posted a photo of a few fancy cars and a private jet with the caption, I quote, travel day, NYC press run for growing up hip hop. Let's go. I promise to bring y'all the hottest show ever. Unfortunately for Moss, a follower noticed that the former child star was actually sitting in a regular seat on a regular plane, just a few rows up. So naturally, the follower took a picture of Moss on his plane, screenshotted the recent Instagram post, and tweeted about how funny the whole situation was. Wouldn't it be long before that tweet went like stupid viral, which would then start the hashtag Bow Wow Challenge, in which people would manipulate camera angles to make things appear in a way they're not. Ain't that something? Seems like all of Instagram should be renamed to the Bow Wow Challenge, shouldn't it? <laughs> That's a, gotcha good, that one burns. From Pepper, at number four, Ava Louise. One of those influencers who just thrives off the controversy, Ava went viral not long ago for licking a toilet seat at the height of our pandemic, labeling it the coronavirus challenge. So clearly, we're dealing with a real scholar here, guys. It's not the point though. The point here is that Louise decided it'd be fun to start posting about an alleged affair between YouTuber Jeffree Star and Kanye West. She didn't outright say it, but she alluded that she could, I quote, spill the tea. Now that the divorce is official, and every comment asking if it was Jeffree Star got a like from Ava. Clearly she knew what she was doing. After posting almost a dozen videos regarding the situation of a fake affair that she made up, including one talking about a potential lawsuit or cease and desist orders from Kris Jenner, it turned out the whole thing was made up. Obviously we knew the rumor wasn't real, but I mean, the Kris Jenner lawsuit got the attention of TMZ. And it turns out she faked everything. But it seems there was some truth to the potential lawsuit, as Jenner's team told TMZ, I quote, however, if she continues to spread lie after lie and a fake letter in a desperate cry for public attention, which she has admitted on record that she's seeking, then we will have no choice but to take legal action on principle. She would then admit it was all fake on another TikTok video, so she's a real genius. <laughs> At number three, Dana Mercer. It seems Mercer's goal here was simply to prove that Instagram is far from reality. Isn't that something? And she's grown a massive following doing it. While speaking with Good Morning America back in September of 2020, Mercer, who usually posts two similarly yet very different photos side by side, explained, I quote, for an Instagram pose, I will pose, usually arch my shoulders, squeeze my core, your butt goes back crazy far because in 99% of poses, that's more flattering. It elongates the core and makes the legs look leaner. If I was shooting in the sun, I would shoot sunrise or sunset or in shadow, which is way more flattering for cellulite. If it is a reality pose, I wouldn't do all that work. I would just stand the way I normally stand, just letting myself be comfortable in whatever light I'm in. After her recovery with an eating disorder, Mercer realized the casual photos she spent hours editing weren't helping anyone at all, not her followers or herself. I quote her saying, it just got to the point where I was like, this isn't me. And if this has changed me and motivated me, maybe there is a way that I could express myself that might help other women and honestly might help myself. Love it. One of the few good ones who expose themselves on our list. Most of them are just like bad people who just do bad things and just get caught, but that was a nice, nice little, 
Nice little one for you. But now back to the, you know. Now at number two, Nikita Dragon. Influencers and YouTubers are all the same in my books. They make money posting content online. Good enough for me. Good. And as we know, during the pandemic, Nikita wasn't as cautious as some other influencers or YouTubers, and her fans and followers weren't all that pleased. So when she threw a huge maskless party back in February, near peak numbers, I mean, masks or not, you shouldn't be partying in the first place. That's not the point though. The fact that Nikita tried to act like it was totally safe and legit, saying everyone was tested before, well, people were posting videos of Tana Mojo kissing and licking Patrick Star. I mean, pandemic or not, you say that stuff for behind closed doors, you know? You don't lick another human being's face out in public. Even making out in public is like a little much. A lick? A full on, like, who's a good boy? Do you want a treat? Oh, it's so good, lick to the face? Like a dog? Come on, bro, my dog kisses me on the face. You don't lick somebody's face, bro. What are you doing? At number one, I'm probably gonna say her name wrong, but I'm gonna give it my best try. Ah, Nika Lu. I think that's wrong. And I do follow her. She's the OK Boomer girl. I know who she is, I've just never said her name before out loud. I just refer to her as Nico. At number one, Nico Lul. It's fine. The streamer making all the headlines right now went viral a few years ago while dancing to the OK Boomer sound on TikTok, wearing a t-shirt in support of Bernie Sanders. Another mega viral video she posted showed her wearing an AOC sweatshirt, reading Tax the Rich. And that's all fine and dandy. I, I love it, you know? She looks all cute in it, dancing, and it's all fun. Good for her. Glad she made a big following, made a lot of money. That's awesome. But after she would post her latest YouTube video titled Two Million Dollar Apartment Tour, well, people started questioning a lot of things, you know what I mean? One of the top comments on her video was, I quote, the OK Boomer girl went from criticizing rich boomers to becoming a rich boomer. Others called out how she moved from California, who's known for high taxes, to Texas, who, well, we know how she is down there, you know? The taxes are like. All in all, it seems Nico Lula won't be backing down as she doesn't even think millionaires mean you're rich, really. In a video from March titled, How Much Money Do I Make? She at one point said in the video, I quote, I think when people mean like tax the rich, I think at the end of the day, they do mean like billionaires and people who have insane, unfathomable amounts of wealth. I'm not gonna lie, guys, you know, I'm in like, I'm like, if I had a million dollars, it'd be pretty helpful. So like, that's all I'm saying. I, I, I feel like a million dollars might be an unfathomable amount of wealth for like the general public. I'm gonna say like majority of the world are not millionaires. 